channel my name is Violet so this video is going to be about the story of how I got Atlas um, it took me two and a half years to get him I waited two and a half years to get Atlas to find the right breeder I had no idea that service dogs could be used for a variety of reasons I knew about guide dogs how they guided the blind and seizure dogs seizure alert dogs diabetic dogs I didn't know any of the laws or anything like that and as I researched more I realized that they could help with a variety of disabilities and also how much it can take financially to be able to get a service dog to be able to afford and maintain a service dog and so once I had kind of educated myself more I started searching for a breeder I went on the AKC website I searched on Google I understood that the health of my dog, of my service dog, was of the utmost importance. I didn't want him to come from a line of dogs that had any sort of health issues or diseases or joint issues. Knowing their lineage and knowing what their past parents and grandparents had passed away from, knowing what kind of temperament the breeder breeds into their dogs, that is very important for a service dog if they've had past service dogs that have been successful, if they have therapy dogs in their lines. And I'm not gonna lie, searching for a breeder was really hard. It's not exactly something that takes a second to do, especially with finding one that's reputable. For some people who are looking for it, they want to have the breeder's dogs have titles. That's not necessarily something that I really cared about. I cared about if they had service dogs or therapy dogs in their lines. I cared about their health. I cared about their temperament. And I cared, I cared about the breeder, um, that they were really bettering the breed. And that's why they were breeding dogs in the first place. I didn't want this to be a backyard breeder. I didn't want to get a puppy from someone who was breeding for profit or who really didn't care about their dogs or who didn't spend time with the puppies, really getting in there and being social with them, desensitizing them to different touches and sound. I just really wanted someone that cared, that cared about bettering the breed, that cared about dogs, that cared about people, that really wanted to have a relationship with the people that were buying their dogs, especially those that were getting service dogs. And that was a big problem. And I came across a couple of breeders that I thought were going to be reputable, but when time came for a deposit or them keeping their word that I was next in line, that wasn't the case. They didn't care that I needed this dog for my health. They didn't understand. Or if I had a check coming in, so I was able to put down the deposit, but it was coming in the day later and they decided they couldn't wait and so they had the next person in line. That was a huge red flag for me because it showed me that they cared more about getting their paycheck on time than someone who genuinely needed help and someone who was looking for the right puppy. And that also showed me that they probably didn't care too much about their puppies if they're really that money hungry. So obviously I didn't go with that breeder. There were so many breeders that I had called. There was one that I really did want to get a golden from but that also fell through that first one that i talked about with the check and all that that was really heartbreaking for me because they were having a litter that year but they wouldn't have a litter for another two years and so it was kind of like a now or never thing i talked to the breeder we got along but if i'm being honest i couldn't see myself coming to them for advice or coming to them to get support in any way. I couldn't see myself having a relationship with her, which was also really important to me. So I kind of had this mental checklist going on through my mind of what I was looking for in a breeder. And a lot of the places that I called and a lot of the places that I saw online, they just didn't meet criteria. 
And so the second breeder that I contacted, she was really sweet. I feel like I could have had a relationship with her. You know, again, being able to call her and get advice from her, text her and all that stuff. She produced really good dogs. She did test her dogs, both medically, so with the pen hip and the joints. She did keep a record of her past dogs. She bred for temperament. Again, I didn't care if they had titles, but she also, a lot of her dogs ended up having titles as well. So like dock diving, there's a couple others in there. I forget exactly what. She's had dogs in the past, I believe, be service dogs too. And she also, when they were tiny puppies, she did desensitization and puppy protocol, socialization, meaning she would expose them to all sorts of different sounds and smells and textures to walk on and she would handle them. She would play with their ears, she would play with their tail, their paws, their bellies, everything just to get them desensitized. Which was really good, really promising and I spoke to her and she was having a litter soon, like in a couple of months. And she said that I was on the list and I was supposed to get a dog from that litter and I forget exactly why, but I ended up not getting a puppy. Maybe it wasn't enough puppies or something like that. But again, it was another situation where I was on the list to get a puppy and I was supposed to get a puppy and I didn't. I don't regret it now, but both of those were very heartbreaking, especially that first one. I remember I broke down, so I continued searching. And that has brought us up to about the year and a half mark at that point. I just want to say like during this whole time, the two and a half years of me waiting, I was heavily researching how to train service dogs. I was obsessed with it. I still am. And I just had this hunger to learn more. So during that whole time, I was still learning and I took that into factor. And I was like, well, if I'm this passionate about it and willing to learn, owner training is definitely right for me. I know it will be hard especially with my conditions. I knew it would also be hard financially. Owner training a service dog is really, really expensive. Granted, it's not all one lump sum like it would be with a program dog, but it's really expensive still. And that's something I went in knowing. And not only that owner training, there is what's called a high wash rate, meaning um, the possibility of your dog not being able to be a full service dog or not liking their job or just not being able to do it in one way or another. It's very high. I went in with this trying to give myself and my future dog, I was trying to set us up for success the most that I could in all the ways that I possibly could, which was starting with finding a good breeder. And so as I was waiting these two and a half years, that's what I was doing. I went in knowing the risks I went in knowing that there's gonna be stress, there's gonna be frustration, there's gonna be setbacks, there's gonna be times where you're burnt out, there's gonna be times where you just don't feel like training. And how I found Atlas's breeder was almost by chance. At this point, it was probably two years or almost two years. And I'm gonna be honest, I had lost motivation to find a breeder because I just felt like everything just kept falling through or I just felt like it was getting impossible. Like I couldn't find someone that I could trust. I couldn't find someone that understood how important service dogs were. There was one lab breeder that I was in contact with that was in my state. I also want to say travel was a big factor too. I didn't want to go all the way across the country to get my dog. I wanted it to be somewhat in the realm of where I live, it could be a couple states over, but that was the most that I was willing to travel. I didn't wanna travel all the way up and down and across the country. I wanted it to be in the general vicinity of where I live. And she happened to be in my state. And so she was also supposed to have a litter soon and we we're talking about deposits. And it was during this same time that I ended up finding my breeder. And I was gonna get an English, a yellow English lab. That was what I was down on the list for. And she did understand the importance of service dogs and she did breed for temperament and she did health testing. She had pretty much everything that I had the checklist for. So it's not like she wasn't less than ideal. You know, the only thing was that it was a lab. Again, I didn't care if that's how I was gonna get my puppy. I would have loved them regardless, but of course, Goldens are my first choice. So I was researching golden retriever breeders 
in the general vicinity of where I was. I started really digging in to the state that I was in and the state above where I was in. And for some reason, I don't know why, I didn't do this in the like two, almost two and a half years at this point of me researching breeders. I researched it on Facebook. I went into the search bar and I said, Corner Retriever breeders in my state, in the state above me. I did two separate searches. And I think it was like a couple down, but in the state above me, I don't know what made me click it. I think it was maybe the stars or something that the reviews had, but I clicked on it and her Facebook page is mainly like a support group for everyone who has a puppy from her. And I ended up finding the link to their website and I went through every single tab in their website and I just got a feeling that I needed to call because just everything on their website was everything that I was looking for and they made a big emphasis that they breed for temperament. They have service dogs in their lines, they breed for service dogs, they breed for therapy dogs, and they happen to make beautiful dogs in the process. They're, they bred for temperament and they bred for health. I just had this feeling that I needed to call. And so I called them and I actually got a hold of someone right away, which didn't happen with any of the other breeders. And they answered all of my questions. I wrote down all the questions I had in my notebook for them. And I immediately told them I'm looking for a service dog prospect. This is my questions. And turns out how they work, the handlers go toward the top of the list, which I was really shocked to learn about because I didn't even know that was a thing that breeders did, but she did because she cared. And not only that, she had a service dog at some point. So that was also like a really big green light for me because she understood, she knew the training process. She knew that the health of the dog was of the utmost importance to any service dog handler. She understood the struggle. She understood how important it was to get a dog right away. And so everything was answered. They put me on the list within like a couple weeks, I believe. They confirmed that I was going to be a part of the litter that they discussed in that first phone call. She really wants the people who are getting her puppies to come and visit, to be able to meet her and meet her family and meet the dogs and even see some puppies I got to hold puppy while I was there and I remember texting her I was like hey is it okay if we visit and this was like a month or a couple weeks after that original call she was like oh yeah um just just let me know and I guess she thought that it was going to be later down the line nope <laughs> it was within that week I was like okay we can visit on this day which happened to be like July 3rd or 4th so it was a busy day for her but she was so sweet and she made the time for us and we stayed there for about an hour and she told us about everything and also just a good a good conversation and a good connection with her and being able to meet them and getting to see how she raises the puppies and how she handles her dogs and where she where she raises her dogs where she keeps her dogs so all this was just a big big green light green flag all the way a couple months after that because that was july it was the very, it was the very next month was when he was to be born. So it all went really, really fast, which I am so thankful for. I'm so thankful for her and her family and that whole team. So one of the things she does is she temperament tests her puppies. She's been doing it for so long. I was originally going to hire a behaviorist to come in and temperament test the puppies because at around seven weeks old, I believe is when you're supposed to do it, which is when I picked him up, was at seven weeks. And so, because I waited two and a half years, I obviously teared up when I finally met him. The drive was like five hours, I believe. And then on the way back, it was about six or seven because we had to keep stopping to let him go potty because you know puppy bladders and potty training is important to start right away. It was so surreal. The entire drive there, we kept bringing it up and my heart was just pounding and I wanted to cry from happiness. I was just so like, ready. I was so ready, but it felt so surreal. I was like, am I really going to get this puppy? Is it really happening? Even though I had already put down the deposit, even though I had the money in hand on me, ready to hand to her, it still did not feel real. And she kind of lives more out in the country. And so 
it was just a beautiful drive once we got closer to her house it was such a beautiful day it all felt so right and it also it feels like it was yesterday now that i'm talking about it and i had his favorite toy with him it was one of the first toys i think that i bought him i brought a little benabone and i brought his little um keys they're not really keys but it's on it like a ring for him to chew I brought a baggie of his food, I brought extra, I brought his collapsible bowls, I had his little flat collar with his tag on it. Well, I was so ready to pick him up. I had a towel ready so he could lay on my lap just in case there was any messes. I brought a puppy pad that I put on the floorboard and then I put a towel over that. And when we finally got in the house, she was going over everything. We were going over paperwork, going over things that I needed to know. When we first arrived, they said that he was getting blow dried because they gave him a bath. And so he wasn't right there when I first came in. I remember he came in, her son comes around the corner and was holding him and he was shaking because of the blow dryer. He was just so fluffy and like so cream colored and kind of except for his ears, they were very orange or like the color of what he is now. They put him on the floor and they were like, this is red boy, this is Atlas. He was red boy, he had the red collar when he was born. He just stood there and like kind of like slid down because it was hardwood floor and he was also still shaking and he was just like nervous and i was like hi atlas i'm your mom i went to pick him up and you know he was still shaking and then once i held him and he like looked at me and i looked at him and he just immediately started kissing me he stopped shaking so much and he was kissing me all over he nibbled my ear a little bit which hurt but i didn't care he was just so excited to see me and i was just so overwhelmed with joy to see him i started tearing up he was just so fluffy so soft it was like we both knew that this is what was supposed to happen that we are meant to be she was like oh my gosh that is your dog i've never seen him wag his tail that much and i've worked with that dog every day he's just so happy to be with you you guys are meant to be and it was just such I keep saying it, but it was such a surreal experience and it just felt so meant to be, it felt so right. Once we got everything sorted and all the paperwork and got all the information I needed, it was so hard waiting two and a half years, but it was worth it because I was, I was so ready, I was so prepared and it all just felt so meant to be because I found the right person, I found the right breeder, I got the right dog yet to be seen still because he's still in training but i i feel it that he is the right dog i feel that he will succeed so um yeah that's the story of how i got atlas i know this video is super long but you know what the journey was super long two and a half years of waiting but again i think it was worth it i think it was supposed to be that way for whatever reason so i don't regret anything up to getting him it was long, it was very difficult, it was full of ups and downs, it was full of sadness, it was full of happiness, but I wouldn't trade it for the world because I love him so much. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I know it was long, but um, now you know the story. <laughs> How to fit everything in there, my whole process of researching and learning and everything. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you learned something along the way. If there's any other topics that you want me to discuss or make videos of please feel free to comment below i'm always open to video topics or video ideas i'll see you guys next time and have a good day stay safe bye